This video mentions physical, mental, psychological, and emotional abuse, as well as murder. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hey guys, this is the prologue to Bakugo X listener series. Uh, like I said in the Toshi Shinso thing, part one, this one's gonna be really dark, especially right here, but I'm just trying to set up the mood, okay? So that way you get a sense of uh, who you're, who the character is, like who you are and stuff. And it's... This probably is one of my favorite characters. Or, no, I love them all because I put a lot of heart into them except for, like, a few that I'm trying to, like, work the kinks out before I just make the story for. But, uh, anyways, I hope you enjoy it. Like, uh, I should mention this part doesn't have Bakugo in it. It's someone else. So, yeah. Bakugo is mentioned at the end. So, let's get started. Oh god, not again. You thought, as you broke through the window, spreading your wings and flying the upper opposite direction of the apartment complex. You didn't know why you ever decided to be with this psychopath. Oh, right. And you didn't notice the minute things that were off about this guy. His toxicity and abuse started with those around you. He forced you to spend time with him, more so than the other people. Even if he had to lie or complain about things that your friends or family did, slowly isolating you. He convinced you to live with him after you told him about your first job. Your mother didn't think anything was wrong with the sun transition. He'd been so sweet to you until your friends commented on his possessiveness. He started judging who you talked to when you were almost done making the move to his house. And you would have taken his advice if it wasn't for what followed after you moved in with him. Just to clarify, you didn't have any dating experience beforehand. Not knowing what to expect when you went out with him, but... All of that time spent with that boy only made you feel pain, emptiness, emotionally, mentally, and physically. If it wasn't for the one thing, it was the other. The family you were born into, the people you hung out with, the fact that you had a job of your own, not spending enough time with him, and worst of all, you not looking the way that he wanted you to. You didn't look good enough in his eyes. He was verbal at first, but then he got physical. If anyone asked you how so, you would want to point to the gun wound on your leg. You spent so much time with this guy, so much so that you forgot how it really felt to think for yourself. You stopped eating almost entirely, so that way you would get his approval back. And to make up for the time that you didn't spend with him, you quit your job and did things that you didn't mind. Making breakfast for him. Even doing acts that you didn't really want to do. At some point, you'd had enough. Enough feeling alone, at least. So when you found another person to talk to, your world felt at ease. But only for a moment. While you were visiting your new friend's apartment, there was a knock at the back door. And you, and since you were the only guest here, you were told to stay on the chair in the dining room. The second that door opened, you saw him. A loud sound filled the apartment complex. <laughs> The kind soul who allowed you to vent to him fell to the ground, dead on impact. So there you were, flying away from the situation, tears pricking the sides of your eyes, and a deep feeling of fear, heartache, and hopelessness plagued your every atom of your being. Since you hadn't eaten much, and since you were forced to wake up at 
ungodly, awful hours of the night. To take care of you-know-who, you had little to no energy to fly. But you flew over the clouds the second that you couldn't feel his gaze. You didn't know where to go. You just kept flying. Seconds, minutes, and hours flew by. You made it to the ocean, and after a while of nothing but the shimmering blue, you started to get incredibly tired. Your eyes were heavy, your body was fatigued, and moving your wings was an intensive workout. You were sinking out from under the clouds. The only thing that kept you several feet above the water was the fear of death. You looked down at the ocean and pulled out your phone. You knew that if you kept it, he would find you all over again and kill you. So, you tossed it into the deep blue water. After several more hours went, you saw a beach. The beach part in particular seemed like it was on its way to being cleaned off. Your eyes kept fluttering open. The night sky in the city was dark and only slightly illuminated by some lights. You were hungry and tired, but you didn't stop. You just carried on flying. Well, until you ran into someone and passed out, you flew right into a very unfortunate hawks. He grabbed onto you and fell backwards into a parking unit. The both of you rolled on the cold concrete. Now, the rest of that night became a blur. But now you were reunited with your mom, who moved to Japan shortly after you moved in with your now ex. After a huge discussion with both your mom and the police, as well as a truckload of paperwork, you could live with her again. On the car ride home, your mom got skeptical as to why you'd shown up, and in Japan of all places. You weren't comfortable with telling her the full situation, so you told her a truth. Or, well, a half-truth. A lie, even. You explained to your mother that your partner got into some trouble with the police. But when she asked you what type of trouble and why, you hesitated, knowing that if you said bloodshed, she'd yell her head off and ground you for life. So you kept up your white lie. Well, the thing is, I don't actually know. The police said it was confidential. Either way it goes, I don't trust him anymore. In fact, I was hoping I could apply to UA to better train my cork and defend myself. Even if I don't learn much, UA is a closed off and heavily guarded place. So even if my ex shows up, he can't just walk up to me. She backed into the garage and parked. Hmm, alright, we'll discuss this tomorrow. Just go to the guest bedroom and sleep. You look exhausted. The both of you exited the vehicle and made your way inside. She walked you down the hallway to your new room. You plopped out and passed out on your new bed. You didn't know that within a few days from now, you'd meet a certain red-eyed blonde. And there we go. I actually did that all in like a second take, so that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> some of that reading was off, but I was just like, go with it. Just fucking go with it. If you mess up, just go with it. <laughs> but I hope you that you liked it. Uh, holy hell, that was like five pages. And my mouth got dry through like half of it. I had to like keep on like the trackpad because... I was about to like let go and have to make that sound again, which I know it gets annoying, but it's like, I don't have that big of a setup, bruh. <laughs> Plus I'm using a blue snowball microphone, so it's going to pick it up. Anyways, uh, hope that you liked it. And, uh, just like I mentioned, it's a prologue. 
So Bakugo not being mentioned until the very end is the reason why, or prologue is the reason why. So, yeah. Anywho, uh, I'll see you next time. I might just make, like, changes to my thing. I might make, like, a fucking, I don't know. Probably a Kirishima X listener next. Maybe I'll do another Hitoshi Shinso thing because those are the ones that keep coming to mind. But I said that I was going to do an Aizawa, Aizawa X listener next after this one. <clears throat> but yeah. Anyways. Uh, I'm going to go because... I felt so guilty for not doing this anytime sooner, and now I feel like I've been liberated. Like I am free, bitch. <laughs> I am free. Anyways, yeah, I'll see you later. Love you. Also, thank you for 1k subs. Uh, I really do have to think of like a subscriber special. But yeah, bye. Mwah.